Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen where everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny and today I have a new canning recipe for you. I am going to be canning up some pork and butternut squash ragu just in time for the fall. Get it on the shelf. It's going to be so good. Now I got pork butts on sale and so I picked up a couple of them. I think they were $1.79 a pound which is pretty good for my area. I have not seen them as low as 99 cents a pound, which I think some of you are picking them up for. I'm hoping to find that deal at some point, but either way, a buck 79 was pretty good for me. So I grabbed a couple of pork butts. I am doing this one, the butternut squash and pork ragu. Oh my gosh. I'm doing it with sweet onion. It's going to be so good. Pull a chair up to my counter and let's get started. Alrighty, I have all of my pork cubed up. I am going to go ahead and get some salt and pepper on them. I'm just going to stir this up, make sure that everything gets coated in my salt and pepper. Now this part is part of following the all new ball blue book, um, the roast pork and spicy broth. This is the method for that. And I like to roast it and then can everything hot. This is a matter of preference. If you want to can it raw, it is okay to can it raw if that is your preference. I like to roast mine and then can everything hot when I do it this way. For pork, chicken, I always can raw. I have my preferred methods of doing things and it's just a preference. It's because I like it that way. So I'm going to stick this in my preheated oven. My oven is preheated at 425 degrees. I'm going to put this in for 30 minutes and I'm going to set my timer for 15. I'm going to stir this halfway in between. I also want my on here. Okay. I also want to make sure you know that this is not an approved recipe. Why isn't it approved? Because the USDA has not picked up all of my recipes and this is my recipe. I came up with it, I wrote it. They haven't decided that I'm so popular that they're going to pick up my recipes and test them. And by the way, the USDA hasn't tested recipes in years. So I'm going by the ball blue book method for the roast pork and spicy broth from this book, okay? Because even though ball recipes are not approved by the USDA, ball has tested their own recipes. And since ball is kind of a heavyweight, I trust their recipes, right? So I'm going to roast this just like in here, okay? Then we're going to make up some broth. I'm going to bring my squash and onions up to temperature with my broth, and then we're going to can everything hot. If you want to do this recipe and raw pack everything in there cold and maybe add a little bit of cold water or cold broth or skip adding the broth at all and just pack in the onions, squash, and the meat, you can totally do that and put it in a cold canner and start it that way. Again, it is a matter of preference. Both ways are correct. You can hot pack, you can cold pack. It is up to you. Okay, here I'm making the broth. I have some bringing some water um, up to boil on high. I just put it in here and I am going to put two cans of stewed tomatoes. Get my tomato broth out of there. Okay. I am going to be using um, chicken bouillon powder. This is the Nora called the Pollo. I love this stuff. If you want to use home canned chicken broth, home canned beef broth, home canned pork broth, home canned turkey broth, home canned veggie broth, mushroom broth, I don't care. Whatever kind of broth you want to use, use it. You don't need my permission to change up the broth. If chicken broth isn't something you like, use what you do like. That's my point of the whole thing is use what you like. You don't need my permission. After every recipe, I get questions about, can you change a broth? Can you change a protein? Can you change the vegetables? Absolutely. Change it up. Use what you like. Okay. I'm 
There's my chicken bouillon. I'm going to put in some black pepper. That's my timer to stir up the meat. In this bowl, I have cut up one red bell pepper. I'm going to put that in. I just want to bring them up to heat. I'm not going to pre-cook them and then, you know, then they're going to get horribly soggy. I'm just bringing them up to heat. And then I have my um, squash here. I have just peeled, seeded, and cubed my butternut squash. And I'm probably only going to use half of my butternut squash. to do is bring this up to a boil okay I'm gonna turn the heat down I'm just gonna simmer it for 10 minutes and then we're gonna scoop everything out and put it into a jar I forgot to put the rest of the flavoring in my broth here garlic powder onion powder cayenne pepper you can use red pepper flakes. I'm putting in like a quarter teaspoon. Parsley. I have some fresh thyme sprigs that I'm gonna add to each jar. Okay, the meat is out of the oven. I'm gonna start filling my jars with meat. Keep in mind, I'm going to be adding in also squash. So I want to do about half meat and half squash. My broth is still coming up to temperature. Takes a few. Make sure you break your meat up before you put it in because pork sticks together in the oven. I like to roast it in the oven because it gets some of the fat off of it too. So um, the tray is full of fat. You want some fat in your jars, but you don't want a ton. You know what I'm saying? And I want to leave room for broth as well so I can make sure that my stuff is canned safe and heated through. Now that I have the meat in there, I have <coughs> sprigs of fresh thyme. I love fresh thyme. I'm putting one sprig of fresh thyme into each jar. If you want to use um, dried thyme, you can go ahead and actually I'm going to put in two sprigs because I got a lot of sprigs here and they're kind of skimpy sprigs. So I'm going to put two sprigs in. Kind of bend them and put them in. Um, if you don't like thyme, use something else. Use an herb that you like and that you have on hand.
when I open the jars up, I just pull the the um, stem out, and then the the time will be all through the jar. Okay. You could use sage. You could use bay. You can use uh, a fresh oregano. Would be really good in here. If I had fresh oregano, I'd be putting that in also. All right, our broth it has been simmering for 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling some solids out and just kind of divvy them up. As you can see, the onions are still stiff. They're not cooked. They're just heated through. Okay, we need one inch headspace. Need a little bit more squash in that one. Okay. <clears throat> a ladle broth into one inch headspace. Make sure to debubble, debubble. This smells delicious. Oh, you know what? Just to let you know, I did have to add um, a tablespoon of salt, kosher salt, to the broth. Okay, I am using just water to clean my rims. If you like to use vinegar, go ahead and use vinegar again. It is my preference. For lids, I am using four jars canning lids. I love these things. They work awesome. Uh, if you're interested, in my description box below, I will leave the information and you can get 10% off by using Goff 10. I get these on and then get the first load in my canner. All right, everybody's in the hot tub. A very full hot tub it is. Get these guys up and on. Tighten these down. Okay, I'm going to bring this up to temperature between a five and a six, not on high. And I'm going to wait till this starts steaming. When steam starts coming out of the pet cock, I'm going to go ahead and time that process 10 minutes. After
after that, I'm gonna put my weight on for 15 pounds of pressure. 15 pounds of pressure is just for my altitude. Make sure you, you check the USDA website, the National Home Food Preservation website, to find out your altitude, uh, the weight for your altitude if you don't know it already. <clears throat> these are pints, so I'm gonna process these guys for 75 minutes. If you are doing these in quarts, you're gonna process them for 90 minutes. If you decide you wanna do half pints, 75 minutes, same as pints. I just want to say that I had a little bit of the pork left over, um, so I cooked it with the leftover squash and um, made a little bit more broth, and we put it over rice. Oh my gosh, this stuff is amazing. Pork and butternut squash ragu, oh my gosh. <sighs> you guys are going to love this. All right, our pork and butternut squash ragu is coming out. Oh my gosh, it is so good. I could eat this every day of my life. Oh yeah. It smells so good in here too. Looks like the whole top row is sealed. bottom row is sealed here too. And my can of water is clean, no siphoning. Never fail. The dogs are sneezing or drinking water if I'm making a video. <laughs> All right, and there they are. Let me turn the light on for you. They are all completely sealed, still bubbling away. They look delicious. Oh my gosh. It is so good. I could eat myself sick on it. <laughs> Okay, that is all there is to the pork and butternut squash ragu. So good. I cannot wait to crack open a jar. When I do, I will bring you along. Yes, the squash is going to get soft <clears throat> during the canning process. That's okay because I want it to be kind of smushy in with my pork when I heat it up. It's a ragu. I'm going to shred the pork and turn it into a sauce that goes over pasta or you could probably eat it in a soup, eat it by itself, put it over some rice, uh, some mashed potatoes, what, however you want to serve it. If you want to change out your protein and can beef or chicken or turkey, change it up. You don't need my permission to change up the recipes, folks. I'm doing pork because I got it on sale and I like pork a lot. And canned pork is one of my very favorite canned items. I do hope you give it a try. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like these, please consider subscribing. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all of my recipes, including this one. I will put the printable recipe link in the description box below for you. Just know that yes, there are ads on the website. You are going to have to X out of them. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.